Hey there Aggies, my name is Natalie Guzman and I'm here with our new Chancellor, Gary May. Thank you so much for letting me interview you today on behalf of Aggie Studios. So I know you've been here in Davis for quite some time, but for many students this is their first time seeing you around and meeting with you. Um, so I guess our first question is, um, you know, just tell us about yourself. Where are you from and what were you doing previous to becoming Chancellor at UC Davis? Well, first, thank you, Natalie and Aggie Studios for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and um, I grew up there, went to high school there, and then left there to go to college at the Georgia Institute of Technology, or Georgia Tech, um, where I got my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Then I went to UC Berkeley for graduate school uh, and went there uh, from, uh, and graduated from, uh, with my PhD in 1991. Um, and then back to Georgia Tech after that to join the faculty, where I was on faculty for 26 years in a variety of roles. Um, most recently, the last six years, I was dean of the College of Engineering before coming to, to UC Davis. Awesome, yeah. Um, so can you walk us a little bit through about how you became chancellor here at UC Davis? What was the process like? Um, yeah. yeah, sure, it's a very interesting process. Um, uh, I got a phone call from a search firm uh, that was handling the uh, search for the for the university, asking if I would be interested in being chancellor at UC Davis. And uh, of course, I was interested because it's a great place, uh, a great university with a tremendous reputation, mm -hmm. great location, yeah. uh, great students and faculty, all those sorts of things. So I said yes, um, and uh, uh, they they got back to me within the next week or two and scheduled an interview and I had my interview I think that was around January when I had my interview with the search committee and the search committee was made up of UC Davis representatives um, faculty staff students and and regents board of regents from the university system and the committee was chaired by President Janet Napolitano and so that was about an hour and a half of answering questions for the committee uh, at the um, uh, University of California system headquarters in Oakland um, Finished that, and shortly thereafter, maybe another week or less, uh, got a call back saying I did pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> They're interested in me as a candidate. Uh, I uh, was very excited to hear that, and and then there it was very quick after that. Um, had a couple of interactions with with uh, President Napolitano via email and phone. Um, then uh, learned from the the search firm that I was the prime candidate of interest and we started negotiating uh, the offer and I got an offer letter um, sometime around I guess that would have been February mm -hmm. and eventually came to a resolution there and accepted the job and uh, agreed on a start date of August 1st and uh, here I am. Awesome. Yeah, so when was the first, because I know that you had been here before fall quarter, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so when was um, the first time that you actually came and visited Davis? Um, if you had actually been here before, even coming into contact? Sure. Uh, I think I made, <coughs> excuse me, I made three or four campus visits. Um, and the first one probably would have been in April. Uh, and we had a nice reception from the campus community. Uh, my wife and I, we both came. That was shortly after the formal announcement and confirmation for the Regents. So what we did was we flew to LA first because the Regents meeting was at UCLA. Um, then the Regents voted. I think they voted unanimously, but you know, I'm not sure. Uh, at least they voted yes. And, uh, uh, and right after that, we came uh, up to Davis um, to, to meet the rest of the community and, and, and have our first uh, uh, official uh, set of activities. Um, with the campus and I made a couple of visits after that to kind of start the process of transitioning and meeting my direct reports and deciding sort of how I was going to get started and, and I had a boot camp activity at the UC office in Oakland with uh, the other new chancellor, uh, Chancellor Chris, who was at Berkeley. We had an orientation to the UC policies and procedures and, and met the uh, staff there at the, at the system office. Nice, okay. What was your first impression of Davis? Um, there's, we're obviously known for our biking community and yeah. everything like that, um, our boba. Yeah, what was your first impression and what kind of made you interested in coming to Davis? I uh, have not had boba yet. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe we can go do that later. Uh, <laughs> I uh, don't have a bike yet either, but I'm planning to eventually get one. But first impression was, uh, uh, since I came in the summer, there were really weren't as many students uh, around as there are now. So 
uh, gave me a chance to get oriented, get the lay of the land, and uh, I got to meet a lot of the, the faculty and staff. Everyone was very welcoming and, and friendly, uh, so I had a really positive first impression. It was quite hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, 108 degrees or so the first few weeks, two weeks I was here. So, and, and I guess, you know, it's the dry heat, I'm supposed to say that. Um, but I say, you know, microwaves also have dry heat. It's still hot. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, everything was quite, quite nice. Nice, okay. Could you provide me with a quick list of, like, projects that you did previously at Georgia Tech? Um, you know, any of... A quick list. Well, yeah. I was there for 26 years, so it was a long <laughs> list of projects I was involved in. If you want to list accomplishments, I've, you know, published... 300 research papers and contributed to 19 or 20 books and have patents and awards and all those sorts of things. Um, uh, but I think uh, when I got into academic leadership, which, which was kind of midway through that part of my career, um, you know, the things I was interested in doing were uh, expanding access to, uh, in that case, engineering careers for um, students who had been previously underrepresented in the sciences and engineering, so minorities and women. And I had a lot of, uh, I think, uh, really uh, accomplishments that I'm, a prou I'm very proud of in that area. We, at uh, Georgia Tech, we, uh, uh, as I left, we we were the largest producer of women and minority engineers in the United States, and um, I think I had some uh, uh, role in contributing to that to that status. And so that would be one of my most pri uh, prideful accomplishments. Yeah, yeah. So. I read upon that on um, those uh, programs that you had implemented to help minorities and women. Um, do you have any plans to try to implement similar programs here or new programs to UC Davis? I do. I think uh, one of the strengths of UC Davis is its diversity already, and I think we can continue to ha to uh, expand on that and grow that. Uh, you may know um, that we are quite uh, close to becoming what's recalled. Uh, a Hispanic serving institution, which is an official federal designation that says 25% of your undergraduate enrollment is, is uh, students from the uh, Chicano Latino background. And um, once you achieve that status, you are eligible for federal funds and, you know, and, and several other things that become advantageous. Um, so uh, Davis uh, uh, leads the nation in uh, women in STEM as well and uh, various other categories that uh, are, are indicative of, of true diversity and so we think we can continue to be a leader. Yeah, yeah, great. What's a common misconception would you say that people have about you? Um, I think people, I'm generally, when I'm not being interviewed, I'm generally pretty quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes people think that means that I'm uh, not approachable or, or sometimes people think I'm shy. Uh, but I'm just uh, generally uh, one that likes to listen more than I like to talk. Mm -hmm. And um, so once people get to know me, they find out what a fun-loving guy I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very introverted myself, so I know the, I know the problem when yeah. people first meet you. It's kind of challenging sometimes. Yeah, but you know, introverted doesn't mean you're shy. Introverted means you get your energy from yourself as mm -hmm. opposed to getting it from other people. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is um, something many people don't know about you um, in that case? Um, many people don't know about me. Um, I'm pretty open, actually, so I don't know that there's a lot of real secrets. Um, uh, I think people find it interesting that I, you know, I collect comic books and, and, and do those sorts of things and like science fiction, uh, but that's been pretty well uh, uh, talked about in, in recent uh, 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 press and, 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 and speaking engagements. Um, I can't think of anything that is really a, a secret, but then I wouldn't tell you if it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. So what would you say is the most challenging part right now for you um, in this position and as you're transitioning? Well, I think I have a lot to learn. So I'm spending most of the time on this listening tour, you know, hearing people's perceptions of UC Davis, meeting the students, meeting the staff, meeting the faculty, meeting alumni, government officials, media, all these constituencies I need to meet and, and hear from and help shape my, my vision for the campus. Uh, and so the most challenging aspect has been the information overload, really, because there's so many things I need to learn. I'm still learning, and uh, I probably will continue to be learning for the next uh, several months before I think I have a pretty good foundation. Yeah. And what would you say um, are some of the, the best ways that administration can have a successful relationship with their students? I think uh, leaders uh, in administrations have to be visible accessible, 
approachable, all those things. So I think I try to do that by, you know, I walk to work from the residence, uh, so I walk to Merak Hall, and people can kind of see me out on the campus. Um, I am, I'm active on social media, uh, so um, I think students get a kick out of that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I'm responsive, so if I get an email, um, when you guys emailed me, I think I responded pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. And I think those are behaviors that all administrators should model to make uh, students feel uh, like uh, we're connected to them. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned that because um, one of the problems um, that we have been struggling with and that we continue to kind of struggle with has been mistrust between administration and students. Right. Um, especially with like more recent events um, and and leadership actions in previous uh, years. Um, right. There's just been that kind of disconnect. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do you plan on approaching that? Well, I think uh, first, you know, I, I've been saying I, I'd, I'd like for us to, to start with a clean slate and, and not think about the past and, and move forward from from here. Now, I'm the new guy, I understand, so there's no real reason to trust me, but there's no reason to distrust me either, right? So, uh, let's uh, give me the benefit of the doubt. I think that my style and my policies are, are quite transparent. Um, I believe in sharing information, sharing data, uh, talking about what I'm thinking and getting reactions from people as I shape my uh, agenda. So um, uh, I'd, I'd like for my team, the leadership team on campus, to, to also have those same kind of, uh, of attributes and qualities. So as we move forward, I think um, students will gain confidence in, in me and in, in the leadership. Um, I'll continue to have many activities with students, like this interview. We'll have students over to the residence. Uh, we've already got some things planned. Um, I'm thinking about movie night with the chancellor on occasion. Oh. Uh, we're going to go see movies that I want to see, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm going to take, you know, take a few students, 10, 20 students with me to the movies on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, that's some, some of the kind of fun things I'm thinking about. Nice. So um, with your work, um, what do you say that motivates you, or who do you um, feel like is a role model to you, or who do you admire? Yeah, great question. I think, yeah. you know, your first role models, uh, at least for me, uh, were, were, were my parents, right? And so, and you, and you admire and look up to your parents for kind of different reasons. My, um, uh, my dad was kind of the, the, the person that pushed us academically. My, I have a sister, my sister and I, and he was very uh, adamant that we're going to perform in school and get a good education and set ourselves up for good careers and that sort of thing. Uh, my mom was a teacher, and she sort of helped make that happen. She, she you know, corrected my homework and, and did all these things uh, to, to facilitate uh, uh, my performance. And, um, and she was the, you know, the caregiver and, and sort of the traditional uh, mother role. So those were my role models growing up. Um, and then as I got older, I started to look at, um, at the external environment and people that I thought were, were doing things that I admired. And, you know, um, uh, in my case, that would have been people like you know Martin Luther King Jr. and, and, and Malcolm X, who obviously they died before I was born. Uh, well, when I was young, in one case. And um, but I read about them and admired what they did. Uh, Nelson Mandela is also on that list. Um, um, uh, I admired some sports figures. Uh, Muhammad Ali was on that list. Um, you know, so I read books about these people, uh, learned about their, their their struggles and things that they. Uh, valued and how they wanted to make an impact and I guess the common denominator were people that I admire uh, were, were people that sort of paid the price and had to go through some real tribulations to, to uh, in the midst of their success and, and, and maybe made them stronger because of it. Yeah. Go-to pump song. My go-to pump song. I don't know if I have one. I think from Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, morning person or night owl? Both. Uh, I get up early, I stay up late, I'm a workaholic. Uh, I don't sleep much. I probably get, on average, five or six hours of sleep. That's terrible. It is. <laughs> I've been advised to not do that, but yeah. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. I, I have a cat, so. Sorry. I'm not offended, but. <laughs> Favorite movie? People are surprised by this because they expect me to say a science fiction movie, but The Elephant Man, I don't know if you know that story. Oh, um, I think I have uh, it was a guy who was living in the 18th century, and um, his name was John Merrick, and um, um, he 
you know, he was disfigured and had chronic bronchitis, I believe, and some other uh, problems. And he was in a circus as one of the circus freaks. And um, I just thought it was a real compelling story. It was kind of a sad story. He died at, at the end, um, but he felt like he died like a man, not the elephant man, as he was called in the circus. So. Mm -hmm. Sounds very inspirational. Yeah, this is a, I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I will look into it. Um, favorite TV show? Star Trek. Buried alive. Buried alive. Ah! Star Trek. Very easy. Wow. The original series. Okay. Yeah. yeah. None, none, none of these copycats. The original cool. series. I have actually a lot of friends <laughs> who are Star Trek uh, fans. I'm sure, they're wonderful people. Yes. Yeah. They know a lot about Star Trek, so it's just like you can quiz yeah. them on anything and they'll. Uh, I can recite answer. dialogue. Really? <laughs> to boldly go where no man has gone before. That is very interesting. And favorite you see? Davis, of course. <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, those are um, those are our questions for you today. So thank you so much for meeting with Aggie Studios. Um, My pleasure. It was a pleasure having you here. And thank you for tuning in to um, Spark Segment. It was fun. Thank you.